Welcome to another edition of Supernatural Confrontations. Today is May 3rd. I am your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli. Um, this is a new series. If you've had an experience, please shoot me an email, la at lamarzulli.net. Today we're going to talk with Lisa and Glenn. Of course, this is a pre-record on Zoom. Um, Lisa's had ongoing experiences all throughout her life. I'm going to edit some of it because it's some of it's really bizarre stuff, and I get that. What we need to come to grips with is that when we deal with the supernatural, we're dealing with entities and situations that we're not equipped for. I mean, we're just not equipped for it. Um, let me tell you one story. In Graham Hancock's book, Supernatural, I remember my good friend Russ Dizdar gave this book to me or told me about it, uh, Supernatural. And Graham Hancock goes down to South America and is taking ayahuasca, but he just doesn't do it once. He does it like, I don't know, 30 or 40 times. And what kind of confronts him, confrontation, is when he takes a ayahuasca, which first of all is this very bizarre mix of, of plant life. How does, how does the um, Amerindians know to mix those plants together in a formula like that? I believe it was given to them. It was given to them. And when you take ayahuasca, it serves as a catapult into what I would call the second heaven or the lower astral. This is why we're not supposed to go there. Skip over the book of Revelation, where we know that Michael and his angels fight with Satan and his angels, right? And I call it the great eviction. And the dragon and his angels are cast out of where? Not the third heaven where the Most High God is, El Elyon, the second heaven. And so when Graham Hancock takes the ayahuasca, he finds himself in the second heaven. And guess who's there? The greys. And he's perplexed. He comes down and goes, what are they doing here? Why am I seeing the greys, the so-called gray aliens? Now, I believe that the greys are biological uh, constructed suits so that so the demons can manifest in this dimension. And we, I'll be talking about this a little further on. I'm reading uh, Preston Dennett's book. By the way, Preston Dennett and Francisco Correa appear uh, in our second edition of our free UFO film series. Uh, the first two will be free. Three, four and five will not be. Heads up. But Preston and Francisco have a completely different paradigm than I do, which is why I interviewed them, to get the other side of the aisle. And maybe we'll call it the other side of the aisle instead of the experts way in. But whatever, I digress. So here's the deal. Graham Hancock goes up and, he, and he's not sure what he's looking at. He's not equipped to deal with the entities that he's encountering. Well, Lisa and Glenn are not equipped to deal with the entities they are encountering. I think you'll find their story unnerving, especially when they find the pool of blood uh, in their bed. Possible implant? I think so. So we'll get into that and I'll weigh in on the other side of it. Now it's time to set the goals for the next cycle of inflation. This way, you're always moving forward, growing, making money, not losing it. Imagine having more freedom and more fun. Start a gold IRA with Noble Gold now and fight inflation. And this month, for every IRA above $20,000, you'll get an incredible three-ounce silver American virtue coin completely free as a thank you. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold. Call 877-646-5347. That's 877-646-5347. Or to find out more, visit noblegoldinvestments.com. Uh, I'm here with Lisa and Glenn. Lisa and Glenn, thank you so much for coming on the record, first of all. Um, You've had experiences. You've had uh, supernatural uh, encounters, um, supernatural confrontations. Tell us about that, please. Okay, the one I want to talk about, I, I've had many through my life since I was a little child. Um, but the one that really got me was um, the, the UFO experience I had. Um, me and my daughter, my daughter was, I'm, I'm going to say everybody, she was five years old at the time. She was back seat in um, a car seat. And when we went to church, it was going and like down a dark road. It was way out towards the wooded area. And uh, it was the middle of winter. And all of a sudden, I heard there was no sounds or anything. But I looked over and I saw two lights in the field. First, I thought it was two people walking or something. And then the two became two lights. So I'm like, oh, that looks like maybe it's a snowmobile. I was like, that's cool. So I kind of stopped and watched them for a few minutes. I'm like, oh, well, we got to get going to church. And I kind of drew a picture. It's not a good one, but um, this, is, 
This is the field here. Okay, I got and it. Was a, right. And it was going towards my car. So okay. it was a big distance, um, quite a distance. And so I'm just sitting there watching them because I like snowmobiles. Next thing I know, the two snowmobiles quickly, within not even seconds, came up right behind my car. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what was that? That is not a snowmobile. <laughs> I looked in my mirror and I saw lights behind me. And next thing I know, it went up into the air. And it just like, I was gonna get out of my car and it just went away. Um, after that, I kept seeing visions of stuff coming to like war. And I saw visions of um, an airplane that has crashed into my mother's road where she lives. Hasn't happened yet, but I was seeing all these aliens up in the sky. I was kept having dreams about all kinds of um, different aliens, different species. And I was like, what is going on? And they're flying over my mother's house. And um, then it's like, I, for a long time, maybe about 10, 50 years, I didn't really see anything else. And then I met him, we got married and we were sleeping one night. And I tried to tell him about some things I saw. He thought it was crazy at first <laughs> until he started seeing things himself. Um, next thing I knew, I was sleeping in the middle of the night and I got up and there was blood all over my bed. And I was like, oh my God, wake up, wake up. I don't know what's going on. And we looked at, looked all over my leg and there was nothing there. I do have a little mark on the bottom of my ankle. On the uh, And he's like, well, it looks like a pimple. I said, it looks like a pimple, but it's not. I said, it came, it appeared like that when I was in my 20s. I said, for some reason, it's like every six to eight months, it'll break open for no reason. But at this night, if that didn't break open, it was no blood, there was no blood on my leg. It looked just like a normal leg, but there was blood all over the bed where my leg was. There was a pool about this big and, uh, underneath your leg, about six to eight inches in diameter. And that's where you know the the blood was, and it was like I'm sitting there going, "Okay, what's going on here?" And then, well, no, I get it's like, well, I had a dream. Well, it seemed like a dream, and I proceeded to tell her what was what I what I thought was a dream, and it was basically there. There's I, I woke up. I was in bed. I woke up all of a sudden and it was, I was thinking I'm dreaming because it was like a dream state. You know, it didn't look like, like, you know, reality, like now you go here, you look around and everything's the way it should be. It was just different. It was like, you know, so I, I thought it was in a dream. And I looked over and I said, sitting there watching these two little uh, gray, you know, classic gray aliens, you know, and they're, you know, doing something with her leg. And then I heard, well, I think I heard, I don't know if it was audible, but I heard something. It was like, they said, wait a minute, this one can see through us. He knows who we are. We got to go. And they let me, let me looked Glenn, over and they packed up and they left. Glenn, let me, let me stop you right there. So you're in like... You're not sure whether you're awake or asleep, but or you're dreaming. So that's we call that I call that UFO brain fog. Something is happening, and it's and it's out of your typical paradigm. It's it's not normal. Uh, and when you're around these entities, they can manipulate space, time, matter, and energy. Yeah. So what's interesting is when you heard them say and talk. Was it? It wasn't audible. I'm assuming it was telepathic. I'm kind of leading you here. I'm leading the witness, as it were. But <laughs> well, was it telepathic or was it audible, or don't you remember? I, I, it wasn't audible. Okay, it was not audible. Okay, uh -oh. I'll be right back. Sorry, somebody's at the door, and I gotta. It wasn't audible. It, it was just, you know. And I, I kind of thought, of course, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, dream and all that. So, you know, I've had some weird dreams before, but it's like, okay, this is, you know, weird pizza dream or something like that, you know? Um, now, when, when this... So, happened, that, that's basically what I was thinking at the time. Okay, Glenn. So, so did they leave the scene after they said what they said to you? Yeah. How, they, did, they, they, how did they leave? Do you remember? 
Um, they went to the opposite side of the, the room. That, that the door was on the opposite side of the room. So I'm assuming they went that way. I didn't really watch them go out. I did just saw uh, they boogied on on that way. And you now I went, you know, and then I woke up. And it's weird because we were, it was at night. The lights were on in the room. Okay. When I finally came to, came around, the lights were on in the room. Just like, you know, because, and I kind of figured, well, geez, I must have, you know, you know, drifted off to sleep and had this dream and woke up. But so, that's not what happened. Let me, yeah. let me stop you right there. That's, that's not, that's not what happened. You didn't go to sleep with the lights on. You went to sleep, I'm with assuming, the with the lights yeah. off in a normal way. And then somehow you wake up, you're, something gets you up. You're not sure you're dreaming or, or you're awake or yeah. not. Yeah. You're here telepathically. And again, I'm kind of filling in some blanks here. But you hear them talking, they leave, then you kind of come out of it. Yeah. And that's, that's I'm assuming that's when you see the blood, the lights are yeah. on. Pick up a story from there. Yeah. And well, I should I should go back a little bit. I'm sorry, I missed the most important part. Um, did I write it down? Uh, no, I didn't. But it was um, five years after this experience with me seeing that in um, at going to church, I actually um, had gotten pregnant. I thought I was pregnant for six months. I had all everything they said I was pregnant, and six months pregnant. They went to go take the ultrasound. The two nurses looked at each other, and they're they were shaking their head. And they came, went and called the doctor. Doctor came and he's like, "What's going on?" And she, they're like, "Well, she has everything in pregnancy. She's got the the milk. She's got this. She's got that." Went down the line, and then he said, "Well, there's nothing there." And it was so they did a um, I forgot what they called it ultrasound, like an ultrasound, and but um, on the inside to see what was going on. And they said, there is nothing there. They've never seen this. And they said, uh, I'm like, they're, they're like, well, we think we might have to clean out you. You might have had an abortion. I'm like, there's no way I had an abortion because I didn't bleed. And, and I, I'm not abortion. I'm sorry. Um, what do they call it? Miscarriage. Right. And so he went in. He's like, uh, I, I can't explain to you what's going on. Um, I just called him today, actually, make sure they still have the records. The guy went to look it up. He's like, um, I can't tell you anything about this. I'm like, well, it's my records. Why can't I? You tell me about this. He goes, well, you're going to have to call Monday morning because um, right now it's in a certain place that I can't get it. He goes, I can get to all the records, but there's some I can't get it. I'm like, okay. I said, so I'll call Monday morning if I know because I need those records of what happened that night. I said, because that's the same explanation I got from you guys when I left that hospital that you didn't know what happened to the baby. I don't like or anything you can find nothing and usually if you have a miscarriage they clean you out and they said we don't have to do that for you there's nothing there so i'm like okay <laughs> yeah. let me ask you something lisa when um do you recall being taken before the so-called miscarriage i don't but i had like i said i had a lot of weird dreams that night but all all these different aliens coming up and around in my house. But the thing that I had, I didn't see what he saw that night. But when I, once I contacted you, it was strange. Last Thursday, I just had told him, I didn't even tell him. So we just started about half hour ago. I said, you know, I forgot to tell you. I said, for some reason, I said, I'm going to tell you, ask you something. And I said, were there two aliens on my left side and one gray on my right side? He goes, well, I only seen the two on the left side. I said, well, that's funny. I said, while I was working, I had a vision twice, not once, but twice. I said, there was another alien on the left side of you. And he had a pad and a pen in his hand taking notes. I'm like, then and I said, I saw the whole room lit up, but it wasn't lit up. I said, I remember the lights being off. And he's like, no, the lights were on in the morning. I said, I knew in the morning. I said, I thought you got up and turned them off. So I was like, I finally got to see the whole picture. It was like I was not in my body, but it was over my body, seeing everything in the room, which I, that was really strange for me last week. Like, let, me, let me ask you this. Um, so you're pregnant and you know you're pregnant. 
uh, and I'm assuming you go to an OBGYN in the first month or six weeks. And yes. does he, did he ever say, I hear the heartbeat? Did he ever say anything like that? No, he just, well, he said he heard a heartbeat and the, it sounds like the baby's doing well. And he goes, I'm going to give it a few more weeks before we do the ultrasound, because if I do it now, it's too early. Okay. So um, just let me, let me stop you again. So you're, you're at the doctor's office, you're at the OBGYN, he hears the baby's heart and he says the baby is doing okay. Is that is right. that what happened? Yes. Okay. So from that period of time till you lose the baby, how long is that? That was six months. I already had a belly and everything. And like every symptom of a pregnant woman I had, including throwing up everything. I'm like, but I mean, the bottom line is the doctor confirmed it because he heard the baby's heartbeat. Baby's heartbeat. Wow. And that was kind of weird. I'm like, uh, and I'm sort of like, God, am I going to see this baby someday in heaven? Or is it miscarriage or what happened to it? And I well, didn't get any answers. But, um, but Lisa, if it was a miscarriage, you would know that you miscarried. I'm assuming you were, you were pregnant by, by Glenn. Is that, is that correct? Okay. So one of you, I mean, this does, this is what we call UFO brain fog. Because mm -hmm. something's happened and you know something's happened. You know that you didn't miscarriage. Right. And, you know, and then on top of that, you wake up and there's blood a pool All of over blood where your leg is. Do you, mm -hmm. Did they take anything out of your leg? Have you ever had your leg x-rayed? No. No, no, my brother actually mentioned that the other day when he was here for my daughter's birthday. He's like, you should get an x-ray. <laughs> like, hmm. There have been instances, I, I've, I've heard about instances where they, they leave trackers and things. And, you know, okay, so... But it's funny because um, I've heard of it. everybody who ever goes in the woods with me, they say they feel very uncomfortable when they're, they feel comfortable when I'm not with them. But when I go in the woods, they feel like something's watching us. I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. I was like, I, I don't think anything's watching us. And they're like, well, they, we, we get in a real bad sense being in here. They can go in the woods anytime they, with um, they, these people, they go in the woods anytime and they feel comfortable. But when they are with me, they feel like something's watching. That's, odd. That's How, the other odd were thing. Were you ever were you ever taken as a child? Were you ever abducted as a child? That I'm not sure. I know my dad talked to me a lot about UFOs. I know my dad had been taken. Um, Your dad so, was taken. Yeah. Okay. He was taken, and the only thing I did hear, however, when I just saw it Thursday, this is the first time I ever heard this thing audible. When I was when I was getting these little visions of seeing these things next to me, there was two. Um, one was bigger than the other, and the bigger one was telling the smaller one. I mean, they were only a little bit inch, yeah, a little bit bigger than the other one. He was saying, "This is your mother," and I'm like, "Oh," <laughs> I was like, "Please no." <laughs> I was like, "Oh no, 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 no." And I'm like, but then I when I had the second vision, I'm like, "Oh," and, I'm like, mm -hmm. and she doesn't. And I heard she don't want you. Lisa, when you talk about vision, that that's a very ambiguous term. I mean, a vision is something like, you know, you're seeing something in your mind's eye or something appears in front of you. Um, why are you calling it a vision? Well, I was working. I have a client. I work with handicapped people. And me and him were working. And I sent him to go do his work. I told him what he had to do. All of a sudden, I was cleaning a counter. And I just saw it in front of my eyes, like I was in a different time, place. And I don't know how long it lasted because I, by the time I got done, <laughs> he had already did the dishes that he was supposed to do. And so I was like, he goes, I, and he's like, Lisa, I was just trying to talk to you and you're not looking at me. I'm like, oh, I was like, I'm sorry. And then it happened about maybe 15 minutes later. I'm like, this is strange. Cause I even haven't, I haven't, didn't see what he saw. And I didn't even see anything like that that night. I was kind of like, this is just strange all the way around. Why am I bleeding him? Why is he saying he's seeing gray? These things that he thought were grays. Any closing thoughts? That's what I'm looking for is to know what I, you know, I'm trying to reach out for answers to a lot of things that me and my children see. I mean, this is not the first experiment. We had other things that um, besides aliens. Um, 
And it's like, uh, it's kind of free to tell a few of these things because people think you're nuts. And well, that, like, that's what, that's why we have this show, um, you know, supernatural confrontation. We know things are going on. Well, we <laughs> saw Wendigos, we saw, you name it. I, we've had, um, uh, I don't, I'm sure you've heard of the lizard people. Yeah. That everyone thinks oh, that was an interesting. Uh, that, that was my most interesting besides <laughs> that one. Because we were just yes. shopping. We were at Kmart doing a layaway. <laughs> yeah. And I just called somebody to come do my layaway. And me and my daughter were standing. My daughter was maybe 15 feet away. And I was um, waiting near the register. All of a sudden, this guy just comes walking towards the register. Like, he's coming in to go to the register. And I almost, like, fell backwards. And the next thing, my, my daughter almost fell backwards. My, my daughter's like, Mom, did you see that? I'm like, okay, I don't want to get her nervous. I said, what did you just see? And she's like, you didn't see that. I said, I need to know what you saw. She goes, I just saw that man that went in there. He turned into an alien, like a lizard, and then he turned back. And I said, what did he, what color was he? And she goes, he wasn't green. He was like rainbowish color. I said, oh my gosh. I said, that's why I almost just fell back over. And I said, because I just saw the same thing you did. I literally almost fell on the ground. Let and me- my husband, I said, did you see it? And he goes, I saw a man, that's it. I'm like, okay. Me, <laughs> but me, now, we're, now that we've something. seen them, we're seeing them more and more. And they're among us, they're at our jobs, they're at stores. And we don't freak out anymore because we're kind of used to them, seeing them now. And it's like, because my daughter seen one, um, uh, what was it, a month ago? At the mall, the one at her, that fixed her phone. I don't know if it was a month ago. Maybe a little bit longer. It was longer than that because she's had that phone for a good six months. Okay, so it was about six months. We saw another one. And this one was angry with us. So he kind of showed his eyes. He looked normal. But all of a sudden, his eyes turned into yellow with a line through them. Yeah, we've seen, and, heard that before. Okay. Heard yeah, and he was like, he was mad at us because I called him out on something. And he didn't like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember that. I remember what happened with her cell phone. Yeah. I remember all that. Let, let me ask you something. What is your, um, as far as like, where are you with Jesus? I mean, have you accepted the Lord as your Savior? What uh, Jesus, oh, I accepted Jesus at 12 years old. Okay. Um, and it was because my dad was dying with cancer in the hospital. And um, that was another weird night. And I was sitting upstairs playing with my Barbies and I was planning the whole funeral for some reason. I don't know what I was doing. Um, and next thing I know, I, I went into another light vision. I was besides my dad in, a, um, in his hospital room. And he said, Lisa, I'm going home. He goes, but I had to talk to you one more time. I love you. And then as soon as he said that, my mother came running up the stairs. They're like, Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. I'm like, mom, I already know. She goes, what do you know? I said, my dad just died. And she's like, how do you know? And she goes, I just got word from the hospital. I'm like, he just told me. Well, let me, you know, I just, um, I will keep you guys in prayer. And I thank you for the interview. I just, um, obviously there's something going on. Um, and I would, I would ask that, you know, you would, you would go to the Lord and ask him to just, just stop this thing. Uh, when things begin to happen, May I suggest rebuke first, ask questions later. What later. I, 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 <laughs> Definitely. Is, you know, you say, in the name of Jesus, leave. That's yeah. what you say. But thank you both for coming on the record. Oh. I appreciate it. God bless you both. And, uh, God bless. So there you have it. It's, it's, another, it's another story, which is bizarre. And I get that. Some of you will look at this and going, my gosh, this seems so out there. Remember, in our Bibles, right? Virgin birth. Talking donkeys, men that walk on water, a few loaves and fish feed the 5,000, right? So what do we really believe in? <laughs> do we really believe in the supernatural? Do we, when we open the pages of our Bible, are we, do we embrace the supernatural or do we push it away? Look, we are dealing with, in my opinion, the fallen ones here with Lisa and Glenn. There's no doubt about that. These, these are not good angelic encounters. So they're both Christians and they're trying to get a handle on this. You can pray for them. In the meantime, if you've got a, uh, a testimony, please shoot me an email. 
um, not only the demonic or the you know hooded figures, um, but I know that people have had angelic encounters. A gentleman called me or emailed me today, and I'll be uh, trying to reach out to him a little later in the day, uh, and we will discuss his confrontation, supernatural confrontation. It seems to him, and I would agree by his testimony, that Jesus appeared to him. We've heard this before. So if you've got testimonies like that, angelic visitations, if you've been taken, if you've got UFO footage, this is a clearinghouse, folks. This is why we call the show Supernatural Confrontation. We'll see you tomorrow. Remember, shoot me an email, la at lamarzuli.net, la at lamarzuli.net. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the air, which I hope is soon, or on the air tomorrow.